Wait, wait. So let's go with the last talk. You have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no? Introduce yourselves. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, in order to start, uh, we are going to talk about Qbot code evolution. Um, but first of all, who are we? I'm Carlos Rubio, <clears throat> and he's Marco Picado. We work uh, as malware researchers at ThreadRay. And in, in this talk, we want to to uh, explain uh, the, the Qbot malware evolution uh, for the last nine years. We had been analyzing about 400,000 samples, uh, and that's a lot. And in order to be able to do this, because uh, in a manual way it's very difficult, we have been using uh, code reuse technology. And uh, in order to cluster all these samples and uh, to find the relevant functions and the difference between, uh, between the different versions, no? in order to focus only on the most relevant ones and, um, and to make it easier our life no? at the end. So uh, in this talk, uh, all of you uh, are going to, to understand uh, uh, the, the evolution of, of Qbot, or that is our goal. So uh, let's go. First of all, uh, we will do a brief introduction uh, to Qbot. Then we will go to the technical uh, technical part. Then uh, to the code evolution. And finally, uh, using some the metadata that we have been extracting from the different uh, samples, uh, we were going to give some uh, insights. So let's go with Qbot. What is Qbot? Is historically uh, known as a banking Trojan, as a credential harvester, has been active uh, since uh, 2007, has a modular uh, framework, is currently distributed by different uh, threat actors or from different botnets at the end, and is in continuous development. In order to show you some, uh, <laughs> some versions from Qbot, uh, the different colors represent the different major versions that uh, Qbot has between the period of time from 2013 uh, until, until uh, our, our, uh, the current date, uh, 2022. Um, uh, with this image, uh, we want to draw, uh, to draw um, or to show you uh, the complexity of analyzing this amount of samples, because there are not a few. And, and sometimes, uh, between minor versions, there are changes, but other times there are not uh, any changes. And we have to use the proper tools to differ differentiate uh, where there are the interesting uh, changes or where are not. So uh, now Markel is going to start with the technical part. All right. <clears throat> so basically, uh, what is Qbot, but now from the technical point of view? Uh, basically, it's composed uh, by two elements, uh, the Steger and the MindDLL, which also has capabilities of hooking and do other stuff. Uh, the MindDLL is embedded into the Steger resources. Uh, it's also encrypted using RC4 algorithm and compressed, in some cases, the resources using brief LZeta uh, algorithm. The Steger goal basically are uh, to do the installation, the persistence, and to inject the MindDLL uh, into running processes. Uh, the MindDLL also has uh, some resources uh, which are uh, encrypted as well and compressed, uh, which basically are uh, common and control config, uh, the script for malware updates, and antisocial web, web index. The main goal of the of the main DLL is to the network traffic interception, strict credentials, lateral movements, run commands periodically, and handle the receiving commands from the command and control. Uh, the Qubit code evolution, uh, first uh, a disclaimer, uh, this data is based on our telemetry. Maybe there are some versions or changes that we are missing. We are not covering all changes in this talk. Uh, due to the time we have, uh, we are going to release a web paper on a series of logs where you can see in more detail uh, all changes uh, we have analyzed. And in this talk, what we are going to see is the transformation of Qbot uh, into a more advanced and modular malware. Uh, so basically, uh, the first version we have analyzed, the 201, uh, has two components, uh, as explained, which is the Steger and the, the main DLL. Uh, 
later in 2017, uh, they split the functionality of the main DLL uh, in another DLL, so they move the part of the hook and it injects uh, to, to another DLL, which is uh, compiled for different architectures later in January of 2020. Uh, this hook DLL disappears. And finally, in November 2020, uh, the functionality of the Steger and the main DLL is joined in only one binary, which is uh, only a, a DLL. So the first version, uh, basically this is the structure. So in the resources, uh, it has the main DLL and the main DLL in the resources have the web index, the script for updates and the command and control config. This is how the Steger works. Uh, so basically, uh, at the beginning, it does an initialization, detects virtual machine, and check if the Qbot is already installed. If not, it enumerates all the users in the machine and uh, tries to install, create persistent, and execute uh, the install sample. Once it is installed, uh, it installs itself as a service, it creates the injection thread, and it keeps waiting for messages from, the, from this thread. So that thread, what it does is uh, to get the main DLL from the resource, uh, list all running processes, and tries to inject in those processes. Uh, it waits to receive an, uh, an, a signal from the inject processes. So once it receives that signal, it means that the injection was successful. And if it doesn't get that, that signal, it creates a child process, uh, usually it's uh, explorer, and basically try to inject in this child process. Uh, this is the part of the main DLL, so this is the part that it's injecting the target process. So at the beginning it does some initializations, it suspends the Truster Rapport GP uh, thread, which is a cybersecurity solution for an ABM, uh, checks uh, protect executable, so you can see the list of protect executable for, for this version, uh, you can find uh, the only DBG. So if it's injecting only DBG, for example, it does nothing, but if not, it installs the rest of the hooks and uh, does the, it checks also if it's injecting a target process. A target process is one of those in, in the list, Outlook, Firefox, Opera, Skype. And if it's injected in one of those processes, it creates the main thread. Uh, the main thread looks complicated, but basically what it does is to handle the communication uh, with the command and control. It also has uh, some e events or commands that are uh, run uh, periodically, you, you can find them in, in the table, which is command and control main, gate IP, NetBIOS scan, cookie kill. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, command and control main, or CC main, is the one responsible to fetch new commands from, from the command and control. Uh, in this new version, uh, 300, uh, the, the, the main difference is that the, the main DLL, instead to, to do, once it's inject, instead to do the, the part of the hooks and handle the communication, now it has an execution mode. So depending on the execution mode, it only does the part of the, uh, the communication or the hooks. Also, in the Steger, in green, you, can, you can see the, the new changes. Uh, it, they add uh, a new check in the process integrity level, which uh, when it's not installed, it checks the process integrity level, and if it's low, it tries to run itself in a higher uh, integrity level. Uh, if, if the integrity level is higher than low, uh, it does the part of the installation that uh, I have explained before. Once it is installed, it checks if it's system, and if it's system, it copies itself to a temporary folder and runs from there. If not, it calls a new function, which is called internally run me intrust uh, executable, which basically it does is to create a child process, uh, usually a process that looks legit, like Explorer, and injects itself in that process and continue the, the execution. So this is the part that is done in that uh, child process. Uh, which basically is the same that in the previous version. Uh, it creates the, the, the injection thread, and now it loads the main DLL uh, using the command and control mode in that process. So the explorer is the one that uh, responsible to handle the communication with the command and control. For the injection thread, uh, they um, add a new layer or technique, uh, anti-forensic technique, which basically is that the main DLL uh, they encrypt in memory, and only when they inject this uh, 
DLL, they decrypt before do the injection. So here you can see how now they inject in the explorer and from the explorer uh, they, they continue the, the execution. Basically, this is what has changed in, in the main DLL in this version. So at the beginning, what they do is uh, a check in, in the execution mode. So if the hook is, is set the hook mode, uh, it only does the part of the hooks. If not, uh, or is the command and control mode set, they only do uh, the part of the main thread. So here you can see this thing that I have explained, but in the code. So in the new version, you see that uh, field I have called executor mode. If it's set, only does the part of or, or creates the, the, the thread that handles the communication. And if it's not set, it does the part of the hooks. And in the previous version, uh, once it does the hooks, uh, it checks if it's uh, inject on a target process and also uh, does the, creates the thread for, for the communication. Uh, in 300.257 version, which was released in 2016, they add a new uh, resource to the main DLL, which is the, the command and control list, uh, which usually are some of uh, the infected machines that are used as proxy. And this also maybe explains that they now add a new command, which is uh, the external IP check, uh, which pr is probably used uh, in order to get the, the external IPI of the infect machine in order to update that command and control list in the future. Also, uh, this function has chain, uh, which is the responsible to install the, the bot in, on the system. So in this new version, it has a new argument and if this, that argument is set, it calls the function qbot install main system, and if not, it calls the function qbot install main. Uh, both the uh, functions do the same, but the qbot install main system does not any check on the system before uh, to decide to install or not the bot. Uh, in addition, I have, as, uh, I have explained that they have this new resource with command and control, so what has changed in the function that is responsible to get the, the command and control is now, in the new version, uh, they uh, get the, these commands from, from the resource, as you can see there, in the function get address data. But in the previous version, they use a DGA algorithm. Uh, in this new version, if this new part fails uh, to get the, the command and control from the resource, they still have the DGA algorithm. Uh, in this new version, in terms of structure, it has changed uh, a lot because the, the main DLL uh, is a split in, in two components, one the, uh, responsible for the hooks and the other one responsible of the communication. In addition, they also uh, add support uh, of uh, internal plugins that can be fetched from the command and control. So in this image, uh, you can see in the structure uh, how it changes. So now you have, uh, the, the sticker has two new uh, resources, uh, which are the main DLL and, and the hook DLL in compiled to different uh, architectures. Uh, in terms of uh, the sticker, what has changed is that now in the explorer only is load the main DLL. And in, in the injection thread, before to do the injection, they check the architecture, the target architecture, in order to select which uh, DLL to, to inject. And also in the main DLL, they, they initialize all things related to, to the internal plugins that they now can handle. For the hook DLL, uh, only does this, which is the, related to, to, to install the, the hooks on, on the processes. And they add also in the main DLL uh, these commands which are related or uh, they, they use to, to handle or to manage the different plugins. So install plugin, enable, disable plugin, uninstall plugin, and reset. In addition, they also uh, do a change in, in the configuration. So if in the previous version, if you decrypt uh, the configuration, at the end, uh, you have like uh, some field names for, for, the, for the config, like uh, command and control server port, command and control server pass. However, in this new version, they have changed those names uh, to numbers in order to uh, make uh, more difficult for the researcher to guess what they mean. 
in January 2020, uh, the part, the DLL uh, for hooking disappears. And in the staker, they have a, an additional check, which is an antivirus check. So if the antivirus is not detected, it calls the function roomy intrust executable, which basically creates that child process and injects in, in that process. But if the antivirus is, is detected, uh, they create the main thread in the same process. Uh, in addition, uh, I have said that the, the hook DLL has disappeared. And this is because now uh, that DLL is handled as, as a plugin. So in the previous version, this function is responsible to update the web injects. So in the, in the previous versions, once the, the web inject uh, was uh, update, they call the function schedule reload, which basically this function uh, reloads all Qbot. However, in this new version, uh, they call a function uh, called enable plugin and they pass an CRC32 has. Uh, this is because uh, Qbot, in order to manage the, the plugins, uh, they use a CRC32 has of the plugin in, or, uh, in order to manage internally uh, the storage of the plugin uh, and so on. So basically, if you translate this CRC32 uh, has to a string, uh, it matches with the plugin underscore hook, which makes sense. Finally, uh, this new version uh, released in November 2020. Uh, they remove the stagger, and this is because they join the functionality of the stagger uh, into the main DLL. So finally, the current major version is 403. From the version 401, uh, they have joined the functionality of the stagger in, into the main DLL. Uh, so now this DLL is responsible of doing the persistent and communication with the command and control, and all previous functionalities has been moved to plugins, such as web index, password grabber, proxy, etc. Uh, so to summarize, uh, in, in, we have seen uh, how uh, Qbot has moved to a more modular uh, malware. At the beginning, it has this DLL with the functionality of the command and control and the hooks. Later, they uh, set that field in order to do only the hooks or only the, the communication. Later, they uh, split this functionality into two DLLs. Uh, in January 2020, uh, they, this, the, the, this DLL disappears and they start using plugins. So finally, uh, here, uh, you can see the number of functions per version, and each color belongs to a different version. So you can see how many functions are served between the different versions. And also, uh, you can see the, the changes that uh, we have been explaining here. Uh, in addition, you can see in yellow that there are many, many functions, and this is because uh, in this version, uh, they add code obfuscation, and that's explained how uh, why uh, now you see uh, that unique uh, amount of unique uh, functions for, for that version. So um, we have been extracting a um, lot of data, metadata from all these samples, and we have obtained some insight. So um, we have been using uh, mainly three, three parameters, that is the affiliate ID, as you can see there, uh, is uh, format, uh, the format is the, the first part is an string that is related to the affiliate, and the second part, uh, in our opinion, is the, is the campaign, because they are uh, increasing the campaign. In some cases, there are not, uh, there are not a, a campaign number, for example, with AA and TR, they only maintain uh, the same name, but, uh, but uh, it's interesting for tracking. Another interesting thing is the version. The version number uh, is the version that has the sample and the timestamp, that is when the sample was built. Using this information, we have been creating different graphs in order to represent or to obtain some insights. For example, in order to, to know what is the most prevalent uh, affiliate, uh, affiliate uh, that is using Qbot based in our data, we have created this bubble graph that, uh, in our opinion, is very representative. 
We can see that before 2020, SPX and SP, they are very prevalent. Then from 2020 and from 2021, uh, again, SPX, SP, and appears ABC and TR, that are the more relevant there. From 2021, from 2022, we have again SPX and the new Obama, Biden, Clinton appears, the call the President Botnet. And uh, on 2022, 20, uh, uh, we have uh, TCTR and AA, and the others that uh, remains the same that the last uh, campaigns or last years. So this is a general overview, uh, and we're going to pick uh, the most relevant there in order to uh, create this uh, timeline no? uh, from the activity of the different groups from 2018 to 2022. For example, we can see here the activity of the SP uh, affiliate uh, ID, but then we see another interesting like TR and AA, that uh, an, one interesting thing is that uh, when TR ends, the AA starts, and there are some researchers that say that there are some, uh, some links between them, but maybe they are only related to the spam uh, campaigns or the TTP, TPs in order to, deliv delivery, uh, to, to make the delivery. And we have another interesting there, the Obama, Biden, Clinton, that uh, they deploy in a very similar way, they are distributed in a very similar way, but uh, we don't have more information about is that if they are related at the end or not. So another interesting thing that we can extract from this, using the, the versions, uh, the major and the minor version, the complete version, is that the, the, when that, those uh, updates in the different uh, affiliates ID are, uh, are deployed, if you, you see the, the colors, it's very easy to see that they are deployed at this very, very similar time. That means that at the end there are some kind of automatic, or we can extract from this, that there are some kind of automatic uh, builder or something that, that, uh, that allow uh, the keyboard botnet to update itself in a, in, in a transparent way for the, for the affiliate. Uh, and that is very different for the common malware that we have been seeing in other, uh, in other uh, talks. For example, talking about the info stealers, that they have to create an alert and tell to, the, to their affiliates that they have to date. Here with Qbot, uh, we think that they directly uh, update the bots and that is a transparent process for the, for the affiliate. And another interesting thing is that not only that, because they uh, update the bot, but not only the control panels, sometimes update um, the crypter uh, in order to avoid uh, the antivirus measures and, and in order to update, for example, if they are going to, to add uh, some new feature. So in conclusion, in this talk, we have been seeing how uh, Qbot has been evolving and has been changing uh, a lot for these years uh, from a banking, uh, an old banker or a, a normal banker to a more modular malware and, uh, and from more uh, modular malware. We see that it's uh, very active, um, it's in continuous development and for that reason, uh, we think that it's very important to track. And looking at this timeline, it's very easy to see that, for example, in the following months, it's possible that they are going to release a, a, new, a new major version. So, um, uh, I am glad to be here uh, at Botco. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I hope that all of you, or we hope that uh, all of you now understand better how, um, how Qbot has been evolving during these nine years. Um, I hope to see all of you at the next uh, BotConf. Any questions? Thank you. So, any questions? <laughs> Come on, guys. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, did, did you find the uh, still traces of the DGA code on the most recent versions of Qbot? Mm. Uh, Maybe Martin can ask. To, to be honest, uh, I don't check that. 
uh, what is true in that version I have shown, uh, they, they still have both. Okay. Okay, uh, another question? One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay.